Hey guys. So the other day I was watching um, Katie's Classroom. It's this cute little show on YouTube. It's part of Super Simple Songs, which is one of like the major kid channels. It's a good uh, kid channel. It's not the awful, creepy, weird stuff. And it's also not just the terrible 3D stuff that I, it's most like, it's fine, but it's just so ugly because it's like cheap 3D, right? Um, so we stay away from that stuff just because I can't look at it. Um, but I like super simple songs and I really like their little Katie's Classroom, which I think they do a live uh, version of every week. And my kid loves it. They're always asking for Katie's Classroom. It's so cute. Uh, so she was doing this little, um, this little like kids activity thing with bow tie pasta that they had uh, painted lots of different colors. And then they had these little butterfly toys like hidden in the pasta and she was finding the butterflies. And seeing that pasta, which I haven't even had bow tie pasta in forever, because they don't have like whole wheat versions of it, at least like at the regular grocery store. And I saw it and I thought, oh my God, pasta carbonara, because my mom would always make pasta carbonara with bow tie pasta. I don't know why. I don't think that's like usually how it's made, but that's how she would make it. And it was just one of my favorite things. I can't believe, I, I don't think I've ever craved it since going vegan, which is crazy because this is, again, like one of my favorite things that I ever ate ever. It's probably good that I've never craved it because I don't think it's something that you can really veganize. It's basically all animal products except for the pasta, right? It's egg, it's cheese, it's bacon. Like you need all of those flavors to have something that that tastes like carbonara, right? And anyway, so I, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna look it up. Maybe there's something that sounds like, hey, that might actually work. So I looked it up and I came across uh, Serious Eats, which is like just a regular recipe site. It's not a, a vegan uh, recipe site, but they do have a bunch of vegan recipes. I tend to trust non-vegan sites with stuff like this more than vegan sites when it's something that really can't easily be veganized. Um, I tend to trust them more because Number one, they've probably had the real thing, like at least fairly recently, so they know exactly what it tastes like, right? This may offend some vegans, but I think one thing that helps us with our vegan recipe development is that we eat meat. I'm honestly not sure how a person who can't eat a dish like real carbonara would be able to tap into the flavor profile directly enough to channel its spirit. Of course, this observation only applies to imitations of meat-based dishes, not all possible vegan cooking. And I don't think they're as tempted to be like, this tastes just like carbonara, right? That maybe some of the vegan recipe sites are. I'm not saying they're bad. You know, most of the recipes that I make are from like vegan sites and vegan cook cookbooks. But when it comes to a recipe like that, that is like, man, that's really going to be hard to make it taste like that. I kind of lean more towards something like Serious Eat, some sort of non-vegan um, recipe website. I did look at some vegan sites first. Um... And kind of proves my point, like the recipes so clearly, there's no way in hell they're going to taste like carbonara. Half of them were just the same recipe that you would find for like a vegan, like fettuccine Alfredo, right? It's like almond milk, maybe cashews or something, um, garlic, nutritional yeast, oil. Like that's not, number one, that doesn't even taste like Alfredo. <laughs> number two, it's not going to taste like carbonara. It'll be good. Like I've made stuff like that. It's yummy, but it's not carbonara. So I looked at Serious Eats. The recipe is very strange. It's got like sauerkraut brine and um, some tofu to mimic like the eggy. Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting sounding. Uh, lots of mushrooms for like the bacon, right? Not sure if I'm actually going to try it. I, I don't know. It seems like more work than it's worth. And I'm just, I don't know, looking at the ingredient, ingredients, I would be really surprised if that actually tastes like carbonara. I will never eat this. It doesn't sound interesting or good. This is actually just a recipe for a mushroom pasta with a creamed tofu sauce. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on it. But I don't know, I might try it. But the thing that I really want to talk about is the comments on this particular recipe. If you're vegan, why do you want your dish to have the same name as a dish for which you don't like and or probably haven't tasted? I don't get it. Make up your own names and stop pushing your agenda down my throat. <laughs> So <laughs> this is like the worst of the worst, but there are a few other comments in that vein. So this is fake carbonara, less than carbonara. Come on, people. Sauerkraut brine and pasta. I'm not discounting Daniel's efforts, but something is very off in the demand existing that he makes such efforts at all. Here's another person saying that um, if you're a vegan, don't try to make carbonara, but eat something else instead. Um, but they say the, the post is from their favorite, favorite author, so they read it and they want to try it. 
but never ever will I name it carbonara. And I think one person explained like, well, you know, if you're looking for a vegan version of something, you're probably going to type in vegan cheesecake, vegan carbonara, right? Like that's the easiest way for you to find that recipe. Um, but I, I particularly liked uh, this person's comment because it's just like, uh, why would you, it's just amazing to me. Like, why would you assume that this is about you? This is just, it's just a recipe for people. Maybe they're not even vegan. Maybe they have certain allergies. Maybe they're just trying to eat healthier because carbonara is by no means a healthy recipe. But even if they are vegan, like, okay, it's not about you. They're just trying to find something to replicate something that they used to eat. This is low hanging fruit here, obviously, this person, right? This is, this is a very unique case. I think there are Again, there are lots of people who are just like, why would you do that? And I think if you explained it to them, they'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then there are a few people like this who are just maybe a little bit deranged, just a little bit angry. I mean, it's the same type of people who view gay rights as an agenda, right? It's like the gay people are going after you, right? Or civil rights as an agenda or any sort of cause, right? It's against you and they're going after you and they're trying to indoctrinate you, right? It's the same kind of like... Alex Jones type of thinking. Not even Alex Jones, because there are a lot of people that aren't as far right as Alex Jones who like spout that kind of stuff. And like, here's from, you know, someone who isn't vegan and they're just like, thanks for making this. This is cool. Um, excellent recipe that teaches readers how to use different ingredients to achieve different flavors and textures. Thanks for giving us the context and logic behind your choices. So yeah, lots of um, comments to that effect. Lots of nice comments and, uh, you know, comments from non-vegans even saying like, Duh, obviously you would have vegan in the title and you know, but, but there are quite a few comments from people who are just very confused. Like, why would you even call this carbonara? Not even confused, but like offended that you would call it carbonara. And the author of this, uh, Daniel Gritzer, he had a nice comment. I can't find it. For some reason, it's not showing all the comments on my phone. It's not showing the replies, but he had a nice reply to someone just saying that making recipes like this, whether you're veganizing something or just, you know, trying to make something healthier, but trying to make it still taste good and have that same like flavor profile and I don't know, so someone goes, oh, that's obviously this, right? He just talked about how it's like a good kind of creative endeavor. It's a good mental exercise. And I've heard that from other people too and other chefs saying that they've become better chefs by um, making more vegan food because they really had to think like, okay, how do I make this taste like egg? How do I make this taste like cheese? But yeah, the number of comments where people sounded rather offended that it was called carbonara uh, was really interesting to me. It's definitely something I've seen on other sites on other recipes, um, vegan recipes, and just in general, like on videos, um, like people wondering, well, not only wondering about the name, but wondering why you would want to veganize something at all, right? Like you're vegan, don't you want to consume only like plant foods and like, I don't know, just like Buddha bowls and shit? Like why would you want to make something that emulates animals? Don't you love animals? I don't know. I think it's easy to just assume that people are trolling when they ask that because it seems like such a ridiculous question. Like it's, I don't know. I feel like if you think for two seconds, it's like, oh yeah, because they probably ate those foods and they probably still miss those foods, right? Just because you're vegan, it doesn't mean that you're just, oh, now I, I all of a sudden hate uh, pasta carbonara or, or meatloaf or something. Although maybe they think that that it's such a disgust response or a, or a reason for going vegan is about disgust, which to be fair, a lot of vegans do portray it like that. PETA does that a lot with the whole pus and milk and all that kind of stuff, right? So maybe they think that we're just totally disgusted by the thought or we should be disgusted by the thought of eating meatloaf or I don't know, chicken nuggets or something. I don't know. It's it's not something I've ever asked someone like that. Like, why do you think that? It's just something you go like, you know, it's just a simple response. Like, well, the, we miss those products and we want to eat those products without actually eating them, right? We want to eat it in a more sustainable and like animal friendly way. But yeah, maybe if I encounter that again, I'll actually ask them like, why, why, why do you think that's true? <laughs> Just wondering. Every time I see somebody write something interesting online about solving a problem or tackling a complex issue or just gen or just generate, I 
think they mean generally smart writing. Uh, I am filled with hope for surely humanity will overcome all challenges, natural or self-inflicted, if people are capable of such things and share them willingly for free. Then I read the comment section and am reminded that people are generally horrible reasoners, self-centered, and pedantic idiots. This is true among all topics on all sites that I read, which are many as I have eclectic taste and am curious by nature. I imagine that it is generally applicable to all fields, languages, and cultures. Thanks to Serious Eats for, for providing yet another example. So I wanted to end with that comment because I think that's true. You see this kind of stuff everywhere. It doesn't matter the topic. It doesn't matter um, the cause. You know, again, you see the same sort of like, in particular, the whole agenda and like you're indoctrinating me type of thing. You see that with everything, not just responses to veganism or sustainability or, I don't know, being more green, environmentally friendly, like gay rights, trans rights, whatever. Like you see the same sort of response from certain people, which I think partly is talking about disgust. I, again, I think it partly is a disgust response, right? There is definitely a disgust response among certain people, particularly re religious people when it comes to gay people, when it comes to trans people, right? It's, I think, a, a combination of like appeal to nature, like this is not natural, and also like, ew, yucky, right? And I think it's the same with vegan to some extent. Again, it's not natural. Naturally, we would be eating like factory farmed animals, right? <laughs> so, so natural. And then also, ew, vegans are like dirty hippies or dirty hipsters and they're new and it's weird and they're making me uncomfortable because maybe I should be thinking about the choices that I'm making, <laughs> the foods that I'm eating. But instead, I'll just rail against the indoctrination on a, on a recipe that has vegan right in the title. My point is that humans are dumb. And if we're going to reach dumb humans and get them to eat less animal products, throwing facts at them maybe isn't always going to work because people are just hardwired to not change. You know, I'm, I'm saying dumb and I'm, I'm kind of joking. I think, again, I think that's an extreme case, but I think a lot of us are when someone is saying, hey, you should do this instead. They're ultimately saying, hey, you should change. There's something about your life that is not ideal and you should change it. I think most of us, our response is like, ooh, no, to varying degrees. Like some people get angry and defensive. Some of us are just kind of like, uh, I'm just going to ignore what they said, pretend they didn't say it, and maybe I'll think about it later, and maybe I'll change my lifestyle then. Anyway, I don't know where else I'm going with this. I just thought this was interesting, and I've seen it enough from people that I, th that I thought I'd comment on it. Um, and also, do you know of a recipe, <laughs> a carbonara recipe that's actually good? Man, it just, the ingredients in this, and I don't like mushrooms, like, oh man, I don't like sauerkraut. I don't like mushrooms. It's, it's inventive and, you know, Kai, what if it's just the best thing ever and I don't make it and I miss out on that? Oh man, can someone else try it for me and, and tell me if it's good? That's really what I'm asking. Can one of you try this and please just like tweet at me or something and tell me if it's good? That would be awesome. Uh, no, you don't have to do that, but if you want to, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, and, or I don't know, I could make a video out of it. Oh my God, I can make money off of this. No, I I've seen that before where people, what was it? Remember when all that rainbow shit was popular, like rainbow donuts, rainbow ice cream, rainbow cookies. And I remember seeing this channel and they would just make recipes like from like recipe websites and recipe blogs and stuff. They would credit the person, you know, to be fair, but I don't know. That always, that always felt a little weird for me. I mean, it wasn't something that's in a book that you would have to buy, right? That would definitely be like, okay, that's not cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was, it was weird. And that was like all of their content, like every recipe, they were just getting it from Pinterest or whatever. And then just making it, I don't know, it was weird, but yeah, maybe, maybe I'll make it and, and let you guys know what I think about it. But if you have, if you know of any other recipe, maybe, or maybe you've tried this one and you think it's amazing, um, please let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Comments and questions down below. If you want to subscribe, that's cool. Support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And I will have a new video very soon.